Is it? Maybe? Yeah, it's live now. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's we don't need no thinking here. countdown. No countdown. No count. Who needs a countdown? We don't get a countdown yeah. anymore. Well, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for Sunday, November twenty fourth, two thousand and thirteen. We are shorthanded tonight, but we figure we've got one telescope. We're gonna push on and see what happens. But we're very fortunate because the telescope that we have is the wonderful setup from uh, from Bill McLaughlin. So, hey, Bill, how's it going? Not too bad. You know, and I just made the point uh, on the on the, um, on the the forum uh, earlier today that uh, one astronomer was not enough, and now I find myself the only one. I still I still <laughs> stick by that point. It still is not optimal, but we'll no, do what we can. No count. No count. Yeah. Fraser, yeah. yeah. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. We One is not enough. Two is... Two is okay, three is where we get happy, and four, and then we're just really cruising, so, yeah. Uh, so, joining us as well, we've got uh, David Dickinson. Hey, David. Hey, hey. Clouded out again, as usual. But it was clear yesterday. But right behind you there is the that, telescope. That is the telescope I'm usually using in the daytime. That's that's the only nighttime scope I have right now. I actually gave away the stovepipe scope that I built on Halloween. To, to a needing family that w was interested in it. So come to my house for Halloween and you get telescopes. Wow, I like it. <laughs> that's that's quite Lewis. the treat. <laughs> <laughs> it, was was a little, it was a little good. <laughs> What's up? And uh, you're going to be running Stellarium tonight. So we'll be running I will be. Telescope. I'll drive the computer for a bit. It's been a while. Um, we got Tom Nath, who's, uh, this isn't the first time you've joined us, though. No. You joined, I don't oh, even know, Scott it, First time you joined yeah, me, it, I think. Yeah. It, it's actually Nathy. Nathy. Oh, I apologize. Yeah. Tom. No, 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 that's quite all right. It's, it's just very common mispronunciation. That's okay. You can call me Fraser a couple of times. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we can all go to where somebody knows your name. Right. Exactly. All right, cool. So like I said, we've only got one telescope tonight, and that's Bill. Now, fortunately, Bill's got a wonderful setup. He's in full color. He takes pictures fast. If there was one person that we had to rely on in this whole world, I would choose Bill. So I'm really glad that, that uh, Bill's the one I'm working with. Uh, so let's start with Bill's first picture here. And uh, for anyone who has no idea what we're doing here, uh, the Virtual Star Party is where we connect up some telescopes in this case, a telescope, real-time into a Google Plus Hangout on Air and then just broadcast the night sky. So whatever is up, we'll try, and, uh, we'll try and show to you. We're glad to take requests, and we're also glad to answer any questions that you might have about space and astronomy. So uh, about observing, about telescopes, about what hardware you need. Uh, hey, Michael Phillips is going to be joining us. Michael, can you hear us? I can, yes. Is your internet working this time? I don't know. <laughs> I can't see anything yet. Right. We can see you, and that's all yeah. that matters. We know you're there. Yeah. 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 We know you're there. So we're live, so we'll see what happens. Um, yes. Right, and so we're glad to take any questions. Now, there's a couple of places you could do it. Now, one is I've turned on the Q&A app in, uh, the, in YouTube, in Google+. I don't, really, I don't know how this works. Um, so you should be able to ask some questions there, and then I can even put those questions into the show, and it's awesome. So if you see that, by all means, use it. Uh, the other places you can go over on uh, YouTube or on Google+, and also on the event page on Google+. So we'll try and watch all of those locations all at the same time uh, and try and answer any questions, and we'll take any requests that you guys guys give us, and we'll see how far we can get with that. So uh, let's get started. So how's your skies, Michael? What's happening? Um, the scope is behaving well. The skies look okay. It's really this computer that I'm trying to get onto the Hangout with. Um, so I have my first shot here, looks pretty decent, is an open cluster in the Messier catalog. This is uh, M103 down in the lower left here. I'm just so the stars that. are looking pretty good. Transparency oh, is not the best, but it's uh, good enough to get some stuff. So I'm just seeing black and white. Nothing yet? Nothing yet. No, no, here it is, here it is. Yeah, something very slow. I don't know if it's this PC or what. I did give it a swift kick, maybe. Well, Help you kick it. I'm going to move over to uh, Bill's here. Because I know Bill's got some other pictures uh, starting to pack up. So, Bill, what's this? Yeah, Cocoon Nebula, and that's that that particular one's the color shot. Uh, you can see the kind of dark lane that leads off to it. 
and then of course the cocoon itself in the middle. Now the resolution is kind of funny on your, on yours. Have you got the uh, the high def set? Um, how do you turn that on? Uh, up at the top, there's a little triangle. In the, if you sort of hold your mouse up, there's like a sort of near the top. There's like a little person, uh, a little mute, and there's a little triangle that shows the. Okay, band. I see it. And there's a there's a gear. Yeah, and before the gear, the the triangle one. You want. Oh, to, okay. You want to turn your bandwidth over to the right as far as it'll go. You should say auto HD. Auto HD, yeah. Yep. It's kind of cool. You can see the dark lanes around the nebula too, where there's yeah. No it stars. says says auto HD. It's okay. Auto. All right. Well, then maybe yeah. I don't know if it's the the way you've got your window set. Can you try changing the size of your window? Maybe. It's pretty much a full screen now. Hmm. Because it's it's cropped side to side. Anyway. Um, are you really complaining about the one color telescope we have in the show? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I know what this can look like. like. It looks like it's the image. The, the image is getting compressed a bit. No, I I see it pretty well. Looks good. Yeah, it looks pretty clear here. Okay. All right. All right. You see, I can I can see the dark lanes where there's no stars right around it. There's kind of a tadpole shaped region around the colored yeah. area there too. That looks kind of neat. Yeah. yeah. That's probably got a Bach globule designation. I don't know what it is, but... That's the Cocoon Nebula, right? That is the Cocoon Nebula, yeah. Ah, okay. And I will now switch to a more magnified version of it, but not in color. And you can see that, which I took at the same time with the different scope on the mount. How, how long are you tracking for, roughly? Uh, that's three minutes. Three minutes. That's pretty. That's awesome. That's three minutes, two by two luminance, and the other one was three minutes, two by two with a. Or excuse me, three minutes with a um, uh, uh, Mark guy, uh, five D Mark three. The thing that's pretty cool about this is that you've got. Um, oops, that's a mistake. Uh, that you've got uh, a bunch of telescopes all connected at the same time to this one mount, and so you're taking yeah. images of the same object multiple. I love your setup, Bill. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a challenging. It's sometimes like uh, you know juggling twenty things at once, but um, it uh, it works most of the time. Yeah, you got some good definition on the center part there. You can see the outer dark bands in there too. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not too bad for three minutes, really. It's uh, reasonable. The only the only issue is just how uh, how much weight you can put on that. Uh, it'll take 150 pounds. I think I've got about 130 on it right now, something like that. What kind of mount are you using? It's a Paramount ME. Paramount, okay. It's a... Yeah. Uh, so Fingersoup has noted, even if it devolves into a fireside chat, it's still fun. That is <laughs> absolutely what yes. I think is going to happen tonight. <clears throat> uh... All right, well, let's move over to Mike's view again. You get a nice open cluster in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you got a cluster here. Yeah, it's not bad. It's it's um, it's actually very tiny, so this is a fairly magnified view of it. When you look at it through the eyepiece, it's just a, a little smudge. Well, you're looking at 103, <laughs> right? Yeah, 103. It's very cool. So here we are. There's one over of the best Cassiopeia. I think it's 102. There's one that's a there's a debate about whether it it's even exists or not. There there was like a goof that, uh, that yeah, uh, put in Messier's catalog. I think it's 102. Though. Yeah, and I think 40 was another one where he couldn't. There were a bunch where he was he was yeah. reading other people's reports. I think. Yeah, there's a and debate then when he about to look up the coordinates. He couldn't find it. I I, I think it, it was actually either a double star or there's a debate about what object. Uh, it was obvious okay. Messier had some terrible optics and. <laughs> I always thought it was strange that there were some objects like the double cluster in Cassiopeia near Cassiopeia and Perseus that he didn't include. Right. But the strange thing is that his whole premise was that he was trying to mark things that were not comets. Yeah, and the, some of these yeah. things are just clearly not even close to comets. Maybe he just yeah. got lost in the yeah. star field. I don't know. Yeah, so so why the Pleiades or M45 are in there is right. kind of like how would you ever mistake that for a comet? But maybe he just added them in for completion or something. Yeah, I think some of uh, Messier's things, he, when he was doing his catalog, initial catalog, he just needed filler material to make his larger than anybody else's yeah. at the time. Yeah, it, it went through several publications. I know there were several iterations before they finally 
compiled the entire Messier catalog together, and it's just kind of a hodgepodge of planetary, diffuse nebula, globular clusters. You know, it's just anything that was deep sky. Uh, he had no idea what he was looking at. Yeah. William Herschel was a little more um, systematic in what he did with the NGC catalog. Yeah. We had a... Uh... Uh, here in Portland, we had the Astronomical League's uh, convention in town for uh, a few years ago. We actually had a guy come in from Bath, England, who uh, was one of the curators uh, for the William Herschel Museum. So he, oh, he had, cool. Yeah, he, he was quite the character. That would be interesting. He, yeah, it was really interesting. So definitely share. You had, you had a picture, David, that you were going to share, right? Yeah, yeah. Let me. It's it's not the. I'm I'm a mere mortal astrophotographer here, so it's not the most awesome. But I'll bring it up. I was out yesterday morning watching for comets, and the one, the very one I did see was Comet R1 Lovejoy, which is really well placed right now. Uh, let's see if I can bring it up. I don't know if that's showing up right there. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was just a little, it just came in as a little green blob right there. I marked off the, the constellations of, of course, uh, the Big Dipper, Ursa Major is right there. And uh, the two-star line is uh, Cor Caroli and the constellation uh, Canis uh, Vinatici there. And it's that little tiny blob uh, right there that's not quite focused. That was piggybacked with the DSLR. Uh, mounted on the telescope tracking for about 30 seconds or so. I think I can even pull one up that's a little wider, a little closer in. I was just using a 200 millimeter lens, and I'm not doing uh, dark fields or anything fancy with that. That's just uh, 1600 ISO tracking for about 30 seconds. And that second one right there, you can see the little spiky tail coming off, and you can see a little bit of green coloring to it there, too. It's really well-placed right now because Comet R1 Lovejoy, it's about fifth magnitude. It's just above naked eye visibility. Of course, we had a waning gibbous moon yesterday morning, too, so that was kind of adding to a lot of the light pollution. Uh, so I couldn't quite see it with the naked eye, but sweeping along uh, with binoculars below the Big Dipper, it only took me like a few seconds to find it. It's not hard to find at all. It's one of the best place comets to find right now. It's way better place than Ison, which is in the uh, in the glow of the sun right now. So. Well, you mentioned. I mean, you brought this up last week. There's now five comets visible yeah. with the with binoculars or better right now. You know, the two that were in outburst right now, uh, Comet Nevetsky and Comet X1 Linear, I have not seen yet. And I scanned around for Nevetsky yesterday morning was the first chance I had to look for it. So either the outbursts, uh, they both reached about eighth magnitude, which should be visible with binoculars and telescope, and I could not see it. So either the outburst is uh, no longer an outburst, or another problem I had was that waning gibbous moon, again, was only one constellation away. Nevetsky is in, const in Leo right now, and the moon was in Cancer, so it was within about 20 degrees or so. So the moon may well have foiled my attempts to find it yesterday. But, but R1 Lovejoy, Enki is just about gone now. Uh, Enki is lost in the sun very near Ison right now. So uh, give it a. F we probably won't see Ison uh, from our backyards again until probably this coming weekend. Yeah, I went hunting for it this morning and I came up not. Yeah. Uh, I was in the right area because you could see uh, Mercury real, real close to Saturn, and it would have made a nice little frame with the the two comets are right there. I, next to Ison. I tried and tried yesterday morning. I was out with binoculars. I could see Saturn. I could see Zubinel Genubi next to it in Libra. I could see Mercury, but I could not you see You could see Obi-Wan Kenobi? <laughs> <laughs> what did you see? We didn't name it. We just tried to pronounce it. <laughs> <for. laughs> Zubinel Zub uh, Alpha, Alpha Libre is yeah, uh, Zubinel, Zub Zubinel Genubi. I, I don't know the SAO number off the top of my head. It's probably got other names, <laughs> no, I, too. I love it. Yeah. Famous uh, Latin singer. I have a Orion <laughs> Nebula if you want to bring that up, Fraser. Yeah, that's great. Here, I, I want to show one thing first, though, before sure. we do. By I'm going to show, uh, this is kind of cool. So this is Comet Ison, I don't know if people can see this, in stereo. So, yeah. so you can see that's, I think that's Mercury and Earth. Mm -hmm. the, the two bright lights that are sort of washing in out the, the TVs there, and the, then Comet the Ison coming in. There the, is on. Dis, yeah. dis, despite that video, the, the way it looks on there, and I've already got this question uh, a few a dozen times this weekend, it is not heading toward Earth. <laughs> it looks like it is in the video. 
It's only yeah, we're not all doomed. We're not all yes. doomed. But you'd, you'd have to look sort of from above and see, but you but that's the sun over on the right, and so Ison's way closer. Stereo's kind of looking past the sun towards Earth, and and Mercury's actually a lot closer, and because yeah. Stereo is is in orbit, in the Earth's orbit, but much further along the orbit, and they're they're able to yeah. produce this view. Right, so, right now the the Stereo spacecraft are really our only eyes on Ison now that we're losing it in the sun from our Earth perspective, and in a couple days, uh, Soho will start getting it in its Lasco C3 camera, so that, that nice. will be interesting. Yeah, we'll and probably yeah. Thursday, Doran Perihelion will all be watching SDO, uh, Solar Dynamics Observatory, will be able to track it through Perihelion. So it will be like Lovejoy a few years ago, we'll probably all be watching it there after Turkey Thanksgiving. And, uh, all right, I'm going to move to to Bill's photo, because he, he had one up there for a second there. All right. Oh, Wow. Okay, I've got I've got another one up here now. Now this okay, is. We'll, we'll look at this one first, and then we'll go to the other one you had. Well, I've got two two images. One of them is this one. It's it's this it's NGC seven eight two two, which is a uh, fairly large nebula. You can't see the whole thing here. This is a three minute image uh, taken with the uh, DSLR Canon five uh, D Mark three. That's of course a natural color image, so that's actually the color of the of the of the image. Now, if you go and look at the comments that I just posted, you'll see another image. Yeah. Okay, as opposed to three minutes, that's forty-two hours. Wow. And okay, it's, nar it's narrow quick. band. Yeah. Actually, it's technically it's 83 hours, or 85 hours, 85 and a half, because it's two segments. But the individual segments are 40, 42 and a half, and 43 and a half. Wow! Looks like there's an open cluster down in the my left on the image there too. Interesting. So this is what we're talking about here. Now, sorry, Bill. I, I can you try changing the aspect ratio of the picture? So right now it's very square. Can you try like making it look yeah. more HD TV? Let me take a look here and see what I can do. Yeah, just take the window, like you're just screen sharing that window, and see if you can change the aspect ratio of it. Uh, it good. Let me see. I'm gonna go over what Scott. What was Scott? What was that you had? This Whoa. is uh, Bill's image. That he, he just put up into the event page. So when when we're talking about put your images in the event page, this allows us to do this. So we have some good photos. I mean, wow. I mean, look at the lanes here. I'm gonna zoom in real quick. Wow. Zoom in enhance awesome. CSI style. I mean, just look at this. That's amazing. Forty three hours. I'm gonna go pan over to the left. Forty-three and a half on the right uh, side and forty-two on the left side. As, <laughs> but who's counting? You, your wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, I recognize this is all automated with ACP, so I sleep through the images. Oh, this is fantastic! I love the dark knots up here. And and about twelve hours of processing too. I think probably. <laughs> it wow, took a long time. Yeah, that's something that the uh, general public just has trouble understanding on uh, why it takes so much work to get these pictures. Yeah, and when and of course when you say 43 hours of exposure, that's in half hours, in this case, uh, narrow band sub-exposures. So, you right. know, it's, it's half of that number, of the, or twice that number of exposures, because they're half-hour exposures. And actually, let me just amend one of the things I just said. Share your own photos that are real into the event page. <laughs> I will remove them if it is fake. It, We've seen most of the fakes before. Yeah. You can try to impress us. I'm, I'm looking at. I see what you. I see what you noticed, Scott, on the, yep. uh, on the event. Um, I just removed it. Um, thank you for your submission. However, that's not a real picture. <laughs> um. You know, I was just thinking today. We haven't seen any fake ice in photos yet. Like, oh, like we you, awesome. you know, during the eclipse, we always see the standard eclipse from space fake photo that goes around now. Right. And uh, yeah. nobody has done a really uh, cheesy photoshopped ice in picture yet. No, the one with the spaceship behind it. You mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so, so Tom, let's talk about your uh, Orion Nebula picture. Sure. 
Uh, I took this Friday night, and um, actually, this the, the stars look bloated, but that's the effect of seeing <coughs> conditions. The uh, uh, stars are twinkling a little bit heavier, more heavier than what I wanted. Um, the uh, center part of the of the nebula is called the trapezium. There's actually four stars in there. They're just overexposed right now. But uh, this is a combination of a reflection and an emission nebula. Uh, the stars in the center, the trapezium part, uh, are actually illuminating the gases and dust around there. And uh, in some cases, the radiation coming off of those stars and other stars in the area are causing the, the gas to ionize not much unlike a, a, a typical neon sign or something like that. They're, they're at the, the nebula is physically glowing on its own. I like so, your photo. Well, I like your photo too, Tom. Is that's not too awful different than what it visually would appear like at the eyepiece. You wouldn't get yeah. the reds. You wouldn't get yeah. the reds in there. But uh, that's that's uh, about visually with a wide field uh, field of view and a telescope. That's that's yeah. what somebody would actually see. Yeah, this is 60 seconds uh, at, at, with with the, with the Canon uh, XTI camera at I think it was 800 ISO. I'm not, I can't re remember off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, this was with the moon out and everything like that. And I didn't realize the stars were twinkling so bad until after I got the pictures up. And, and but it's it's uh, for for beginning beginning astrophotographers doing the or something like the Orion Nebula is a really challenging object to get it to come out well. Yeah. Right, because it's so bright in some places and a lot fainter in other places, and you get you know it's a really tough object. I'm gonna show Michael. Michael's been getting us because his internet is terrible right now. He's been getting us to share some. Oh, you got his video? video. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I've got his. He's, he's sure. did a time lapse of Ison, and I thought I would just show that. Oh, cool. thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah. So let's see if this works. Can you see that okay? Yeah, I can see it. Oops. See yep, it. I see it. Yeah. That was from the 19th. I was using a, a tracking mount and a 70 millimeter zoom lens. Oh, cool. And it's about a half an hour's worth of movement. I can't see much of the tail there, but I think at the very end of the video there, yeah, you see the, uh, the processed version. I'm going to share your link in the event page for people to want to watch it. Thanks. Yeah. That was just one too many tabs for this poor sad computer here. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's turn on. I was looking at some predictions for ice, and if its tail brightens up enough, it's not out of the realm of possibility. We may see the tail above the horizon while the head of it's down below. Oh, that would be awesome. Uh, oh, wow. If, if it extends long enough and bright enough, that's that's a possibility here in the next few days. It's uh, predicting the Tail, what the tail of comets are going to do is even tougher than predicting what comets are going to do. So that, mm -hmm. that might be. David, have you have you seen anything as uh, to how quickly it's going to dim once it comes out the other side? Pretty pretty quick. It's it's yeah. going to go down below magnitude zero probably within about a week. So really? We, we've really got that first week of December to uh, to see it well. Although it's it's going to start tracking further north and it's going to become circumpolar. I was just doing some research on this. Uh, toward the end of, de of December, it's going to be. A, up in almost up in Hercules and Ursa Minor, so really? but it will oh, be wow. down. It, it'll be down again in the range of like six magnitude by the end of December. So, so have they determined this is a periodic comet, or they're not sure yet? Uh, this this is a first time visitor. This this comet is still got a C designation in front of it. So it's uh, I I don't know if its orbit's being altered in any way by its passage inside the solar right. system, but it's. Uh, there, it's a uh, first-time visitor to the inner solar system, so yeah, that's, that's one, go one of the things that's making it so hard to tell what it's going to do. <laughs> Let's just go to Bill's picture here while we're while we've got it. A little galaxy. Yeah, this oh, is another oh. one I've got two of. I've got a closer one here in a minute. Uh, that's that's uh, NGC 7331, uh, otherwise known as the Deerlick Group. This over here is Stevens Quintet. On the, oh, cool. to the lower left, so it's all in one view. You can see galaxy there, 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 the big yeah. one, and then of course Stevens Quintet down there. Yeah, you got about a dozen in the field there. Looking yeah, there's around. there's quite a few little galaxies in that area. It's in Pegasus, so there's a, a quite a few in there. And now we'll open up uh, the other one, which is um, much closer view. 
I know I'm, I'm like being a total pedantic about this. What method are you using to screen share? Are you screen sharing the window or are you screen sharing the whole desktop? Uh, the window, I'm pretty sure. Let me yeah, double window. check that. Let me go okay. back to my... Yeah. Because it's just, it's just like, it, it feels like it's overly compressing the, the size of it. So it's making something big. No, it's definitely Bill. the window. Yeah, and Bill, how, are, are your images are square or are they 16 by 9? Uh, I'd crop these, so they're square. There you go. And then how big is the window on your screen? It's full, almost, yeah, well, it's, this, the, it's not the same aspect ratio. The, the window is square, and the, but it's full height of the, of the monitor. Could you try making it a little smaller, maybe? I don't know. Like, it feels like it's compressed, like... Sp- yeah. Well, he, his images are square, so if he screen yeah, shares a square a window, yeah. he's still going to chop off the left No, right I know, but if he makes it smaller, mm-hmm. it's going to sort of improve the All resolution. Right. So how about that's like better. that? That's better. That yeah. do it? Okay. Yeah, that's definitely better. So I just need to stretch it out to the... There we go. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Better anyway. Yeah, we'll figure this out off offline. I apologize, yeah. everybody. Well, by the time we get done, we'll have it figured out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we haven't been doing this for a while. We're completely new at this, folks. Yeah, we've so never done this yeah. before. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move to Michael's view here. Michael, what do you got? I am looking at the Soul Nebula. I think it's the uh, usually shot together with the heart, so the heart and the soul, because I don't see where the where the soul is. <laughs> Maybe I'm, I don't know. I'm almost like a been wondering a, for years where the soul uh, is, and I think you found think it. it. It's like it looks like a little kind of a skull almost here. I don't know. You see like a mouth and maybe some pink cool. eyes and a little nose maybe in the middle here. I don't know. This is this is a tricky one here. For I don't know why it's it's showing up a lot of noise. This is 300 seconds, yeah. and the camera is pretty cool because it, it is well below freezing outside right now, which is why I'm happy to be inside. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the Soul Nebula right here in Stellarium, and this is where the heart is. So I guess if we flipped it around. Um, yeah, my, you, I'm writing to be all my stuff. Yeah. yeah. I just got to make a quick shout out to Richard Drum. Mm. Richard, you should join us sometime. He's watching right now, but he's uh, Richard Drum is great. He's the person who does all of the processing for uh, the Virtual Star Party for the sorry for the Weekly Space Hangout, and he puts them all into the into the 365 Days of Astronomy podcast feed. So, yeah. been big fan and supporter for years and years um, and got me into meteorite collecting and I blame him <laughs> <laughs> so Tom what is this oh this is uh, uh, another shot of the Orion Nebula but this is a shorter exposure so it shows the trapezium right yeah, there in the center it looks like Mickey Mouse yeah, ears yeah. <laughs> um, so it's this part is very bright but it's, it, this shows just the very core of the Orion Nebula itself. Uh, so this is this is really tricky, like I said, for astrophotographers. And this is just one shot. What I'm going to be working on this week is uh, I took this one and a series of short exposures like this, a series of medium exposures, and a series of lar- large exposures, and I'm hoping to combine them all together to get a, a nice overall effect. I'm not sure how it's going to turn out because I've never done it before, but it's it's neat showing the in- interior of a nebula like this. That's a that's about what the Orion Nebula looks like if you do a star party from like downtown St. Pete. When you yeah. when you look at it, you just see that center core and you miss those extensions. Minus the you wouldn't see the color, of course, but right, it, exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I typically see just a little twinge of green in, in mine, sort of a bluish green. Yeah, yeah. But you got the, yeah, the trapezium is just resolved in there. So Yeah. And this like I said, the scene conditions weren't that great. So it was nice that I was able to uh, isolate out. There's actually four stars in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Those are massive stars too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna explode soon. Yeah, they're very young massive stars. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, th- this was cool getting it this way. I'm going to see if I can bring up one of my uh, pictures of the Crab Nebula, but it, it came out pretty faint, so I'm not sure if this is going to work. Now, what are you using for your uh, for your camera? 
This is a Canon XTI. It's an older model, uh, unmodified, and I just have it hooked up to my uh, uh, telescope, which is a uh, Celestron CPC 1100, 11-inch Schmidt Cassegrain. Uh, and again, yeah, my background information: the uh, the observatory is located uh, just northwest of Portland, uh, so it's it's uh, about 1,200 foot ele elevation. But I, I'm actually looking over the Portland light bubble as well. <laughs> if, if we're doing anything to the south, but this this is cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go over to Bill's picture now. Sure, he, he's got a picture of a satellite. Yes, and uh, actually oriented correctly, I guess you'd say geographically, it's the California Nebula. Oh, yeah. Awesome. There I am. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Every state should have a nebula. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah, we have the North American Nebula. We have the California Nebula. The Oregon Nebula is somewhere up here, I guess, but I'm, I'm missing it. <laughs> it's rained it. out. It's yeah. rained out as usual. There's just clouds over it you can't see. Okay, I want to try one more thing, Bill. Um, it says up in the menu bar that you're zooming. It says fif zoom 1500. Can you see, like, make sure it's not zoomed? Is there a way to view so it's... Well, if I go one to one, it's probably going... Because I think it's zoomed out. Can you try um, that? Yeah, can you go to one to one? There we go. That's full screen. Is that better? Way better. Okay. I would even say it's more better. Yeah, I would say it's more better. better. Only do that. Better is... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Unless you now have a you don't have a screen that you can use. Well, no, that's not a problem. I've got four of them here. Okay, all right, perfect. <laughs> cool. That's terrific. And so, and sorry, that's the California. That's and and how long was that? That was again three minutes. Um, Canon. Five D. Nice color to it. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, and here, Jason. Thank you, Jason H. Just shared into the event page. Um, a little bit of context for the stereo image of Ison and what it's really going to do. So this is oh, cool. the orbit of, of Ison. Here's Earth and Venus and Mercury. And so it's going to pass through again here. It's that going looks, towards the sun. That so, looks like Starry Night, the software so, program. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, even though it might look from a particular perspective that it's heading right for us, Context is key. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, the, the, the whole purpose of the two stereo A and B spacecraft, they're looking at the sun from different angles along the, the ecliptic, the Earth's orbit. Right. So they're, they're at a drastically different vantage point, but they also catch comets when they pass through. So they've seen Ison and Enki this past week. Oh, and Bill Shung Sirius. Yeah, unfortunately that came up. It wasn't supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Dog Nebula. <laughs> the dog name is yeah. Perfect. yeah, perfect. Keenest major. <laughs> yeah, nobody names their dog Procyon of Canis Minor. They all name their dog Sirius. Seriously? <laughs> oh. Oh. You uh, can't take my job, Tom. I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm the one here for the groaners. You're the, oh. you're the king. Scott is the king of all groaners. Um, <laughs> all right, let me see. So we've got another thing from from Michael here. Let's see if I can make this happen. Um, and while that's going on, uh, Jeff Legay asks, Hey, guys, what filter is best to use to see the California or North American nebula? Ooh, that's two different filters. Did so you visually that, see it? So is that working? Can you see that? Can you see Saturn and uh, Mercury going by there? So it's Saturn. Oh, the one that's, yeah. Saturn's the one that's higher up. And yeah, I see it. The one no, that's Saturn's the one on the lower left. And yeah. Then, uh, Mercury's the one in the uh, that's the brighter one in the top center. Yeah, yeah Mercury oh. is is much brighter than Saturn right now. It's a lot yeah. easier to find. Yeah, this was from this morning. Oh wow! Oh, nice. I got I got these uh, these magic lantern animations down to a science now. They're they're fairly oh, cool. easy to do. I, so I I've just seen, crank through them. I've seen one or two images of Ison from this morning, but they're dwindling now. I'm not seeing as many from imagers as I had been seeing the last few days. So I would be surprised if I see any tomorrow. But somebody might be yeah. managed yeah. to catch it. But and then a few more days, and then boom, we're gonna get the big ones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bill, what's this now? Oh, that's we're back on the side. That's the California Nebula, but it's a zoomed-in uh, section of it, so you're not seeing a whole lot of it much longer focal length. 
So you're just seeing kind of the middle clip of it. Just looks like there's clouds. And then, oh, it's that it's that same. Uh, it's your same satellite because you take you took the picture at the same. Time. I'm not sure if it's the same satellite or not. Uh, it's a little more sensitive, so it it might have picked up a fainter satellite. Well, there's there's, there's two in there. One. One yeah, the there's a second one. Yeah, yeah, there are two of them there. Yeah, you might be getting geosynchronous satellites sometimes. You, you get those in the images as well. Uh, observing the Orion Nebula at certain times of the year, when I was doing public outreach at the Flander Observatory in Tucson, we would get geosync satellites passing by. You'd see them kind of just slowly drift through the field. And everyone's like, aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I have had people ask me before, what are those those things that you see moving near the Orion Nebula? I'm like, they're geosync satellites. At certain times of year, you'll see them. At least that's what the NSA told us to tell you. <laughs> but the oh, geosynchronous yeah, satellites, they're they are really far out, right? They're, they're way out there. Yeah, they're only visible with a telescope or a camera. You wouldn't see them with the naked eye. But you, you can see them uh, with a telescope. you just got to be aimed at where they are. And so, uh, Bill, what's this now? That is the Flaming Star Nebula. And do you have this in color as well? I'm getting it and working on the color one as we speak. I just asked too much. But it'll be another couple of minutes before I can get it tweaked out to the point where it's recognizable. <laughs> uh, Jeff says, I've got a 12-inch Dobsonian, and I'm in the city. Which two filters were you referring to? Oh, uh, the, the, the workhorse... <clears throat> pardon me. The workhorse uh, filter to pick up is like an Oxygen 3 or O3 yeah. filter. Uh, another one to pick up is a nebula filter, which is a little bit broader band than an O3. Uh, for the California nebula, uh, you want a, uh, I think it's a hydrogen beta filter, which is pretty much Actually, exclusive. Hydrogen, I think hydrogen alpha, wouldn't it be? Hydrogen alpha, yeah. I couldn't yeah. remember if one or the other. Um, and you need a really dark sky to see the California nebula uh, visually. Uh, with, even with a filter, it, it's very hard to. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never caught that visually. So. Yeah. Well, interestingly, too, the the thing that to remember about hydrogen alpha filters or, or narrow band filters in general is the narrower the band pass, and it's usually expressed in nanometers. Lower is better. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, a ten nanometer is not going because the the emissions are actually on a pretty much a single wavelength so the closer you can get in on either side of that single wavelength with your cutoff the more of the real light you're going to get that you want and the less of the light pollution you're going to get so um, the narrower the band you can get the better unfortunately as they get narrower they also get more expensive uh, the three nanometer filter that I'm using is outrageously expensive the 10 is about a quarter of that um, but it does you know that that image that I showed you that was taken with the narrowband filters, the, the, the 85 hour one, almost all of it was taken with the moon in the sky, some of it with a full moon in the sky. Uh, yeah. And it cuts so much of that light out that it just isn't that much of an issue anymore. Well, Gary is sort of the, the poster child of this, and he's off on a cruise right now, but he's running a hydrogen alpha filter. And, you know, from light polluted Los Angeles, he gets beautiful views of the North American Nebula and the California Nebula and all that. So, so yeah, H, H alpha photographically is a good workhorse filter. Yeah, it really yeah. is. It's, it's, yeah. If I had to choose one narrowband filter, it would definitely be the H alpha. Yeah. Uh, but if you're doing visual work, an O3 or Nebula filter works very, very well. Uh, so, Tom, what have you got on your Oh, this is this is a poor image. I didn't bother stacking it, but that's the Crab Nebula. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, very. It's about that's about sixty seconds uh, in color, of course. But I don't have the little filaments or anything showing up very well. I I haven't had a chance to stack the, this image. I got about a dozen or so uh, images to stack up yet. Uh, but this is a supernova remnant that the Chinese uh, recorded in uh, 1054 BC. Uh, I actually knew a guy who made a little shutter arrangement uh, on a motor with a uh, shutter blades, hooked it up to a, I think a 36 inch telescope, and was able to resolve the pulsar in the middle there. Oh, cool! Wow. Cool. 
Yeah, you know, it, it, I, that that was an impressive video. You just see this thing <clears> flickering in and out as as you varied the uh, speed of the motor for the shutter. It yes. amazed me. I, I believe it was out of the Kitt Peak National Observatory. They've done photos of this over a span of 50 years, and you can see the evolution uh, of Nebula. Actually, how it's it's actually changing yeah. even over that oh, short yeah. shortest span of time. I believe it was. I want to say it was out of the Kitt Peak National Observatory. They did that. Yeah, ago. I mean, you get these time lapses where you can just see the structure of the supernova changing. We had that with the one that happened in 1990. When was it? 90. 89. I think the, 89 the one. A? The one that yeah, was yeah. in the large yes. mantle in the cloud. Yeah, and yeah. you, you know, and you can see these time lapses. We've had so much length of time now that you can see this yeah. this sphere radiating outward from the blast, it's, like it's, like the Death Star. It's weird because these deep sky objects, you don't usually think of them changing in human lifespans, but they, they actually are changing very slowly. Yeah. yeah. And they're, yeah. they're not going to be around for long. I mean, when you look at these supernova remnants, uh, a good example that we start to see is the Veil Nebula and the Witch's Broom, and those are yeah. all remnants of, of a supernova. And, you know, a few more thousand years and it's going to be gone. You so, were talking yeah. about Pulsar in there, too. For a very brief time, this had the designation of when they discovered of... Uh, of LGM one of uh, because they, they jokingly referred to it as little green men at the time. They oh, I forgot they, about that. Yes. When they yeah. when they didn't know what pulsars were yet, they thought they at, for a very very brief time they thought they had found maybe the first extraterrestrial signal until they naturally explained what what it was. Yeah, it's it's something like one sixtieth of a second rotation yeah, speed they, or something like that. If I remember yeah. correctly, they, they they thought they, that it might be some kind of uh, interstellar signaling uh, or timing beacon or something like that. But now yeah. we know natural that there's a natural explanation for it. <laughs> Bill, we lost your picture. We're back. To, oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going to go back to Bill's picture. So, Bill, can you try that again? Do the full screen zoom, whatever it was that you did, or the like one to one on it on this object, whatever it is that you did. Now he's just messing with you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> now what you need to do is make that green and claim <laughs> it's the sun. Yeah. And oh. praise will love you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so what is it, Bill? Here's somebody slowing. That's what it is. Let me see. I can hear somebody's drive slewing. <laughs> That's Flaming Star Nebula again, uh, but now it's in, color. in color, and it's got uh, a reflection nebula, the blue embedded in the uh, in the other nebula, the uh, emission nebula. I also have of the same area. Let me pull it up. And it will just take a second here. This is one I'm working on. And it's the same area. This is hydrogen alpha. And you can see this is the, the area down here in the middle is the or this this one over here is actually the flaming star nebula, the very concentrated one. Yeah. That, that's what we were looking at pretty much full field before, but it's got all these M38, M36, that's a oh, wow. three different built. sharpless objects. Uh, IC417 right next to it. A lot that's of in a, stuff. It's in Arigo, right? I believe it is. Yes. Yeah, that, that's amazing. Yeah, because those 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 open clusters, you know, in 36, those are star party favorites there too. But you don't usually realize how much. Nebulosity this, they're embedded in. This was a, high, a three nanometer hydrogen alpha filter, uh, uh, an S big STT eighty three hundred, and a uh, one hundred and thirty five millimeter camera lens. So uh, that's why the wide field. So st Steve uh, Stephen Coates is sharing some just amazing images into yeah. the page. I got to share some of these because they're just unbelievable. So here the flaming star. This is his flaming star nebula. Yeah, we were, we were trying to get him into this star party, but I think he got clouded out tonight. Did he? Okay, Stephen, any time, man. You are yeah. welcome. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. And this is his California. All right, so here's here's his California. Awesome. Let's zoom in here. <laughs> the dog star is barking. 
<laughs> I think that's my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> that's just phenomenal, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. That's very nice texture and 3D effect. Yeah, just beautiful. Would love to hear even just your technique. So, so come join us sometime, even if it's uh, you're getting clouded out. Well, you know what? We're sort of nearing the end of our hour, and so we should probably start to wrap things up. And uh, I know I know we're exhausting Bill. So. Uh, Oh, so. <laughs> I'm I'm doing fine. Um, but uh, yeah, so so you now we've got uh, a live episode of Astronomy Cast tomorrow. I forget the topic, but Pamela's back from her trip, so we'll be doing that. Um, and then the big event uh, for David David is the uh, Comet Ison's going to hit perihelion on the 28th, which is not far, right? Four days. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're very close. It's strange we've been we've been well, writing about this for over a year. It was will like you be September. thankful for that? <laughs> if it survives, if it, I, I'm real hoping we have a bright comet because we haven't had a really great northern hemisphere comet since Hyukutaki and Hillbop yeah. back in the late yeah. 90s. So, yeah. so there's yeah, been I, Comet I, Holmes was okay. Comet Holmes when it brightened up that was kind of neat. But everything else is headed to the southern hemisphere, so we're due. So we are totally well, due. And I won't put this out to all of our uh, all of our virtual star party fans and photographers out there. <laughs> now that it's becoming more possible to image Ison. Please go out there and and try to capture it right before sunrise yeah. and immediately afterwards. I'm, I know Thad and I are going to be going out next Sunday morning to try to get some images. So we would love to have an ice and BSP if we can get it's, a lot of people to share their images. It's, it's strange to think when Hell Bop came by, we were still shooting with film. Right. <laughs> it's strange to think uh, how how much the technology has changed just in that very short span of time. I actually have a oh, I have a picture under somewhere. That my dad took with film of, yeah. of Hellbop. Um, so, and the other thing you should be aware of is that we're doing a contest with Space Weather, Space Weather, and uh, Oceanside Photo and Telescope, uh, and they're giving away ten thousand dollars in prizes for good pictures of the best pictures of Ison. So, uh, you can go to uh, go to Oceanside Pacific Telescope, and you'll see uh, the contest there, and. You know, I think it's going to go into December, so definitely contribute your, your pictures. Um, cool. Well, Bill, thank you very much for being our lone uh, astronomer tonight. Well, um, hopefully I did okay. By the way, the one that's up there now is NGC 281 Pac-Man Nebula. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, cool. And David, sorry you didn't get uh, you didn't get your clear skies tonight, but uh, that's okay. I think I can start bringing in I think I can start bringing in Jupiter here in a week or two. It's going to be clearing the trees about this time. So this will be our third cycle with the virtual star party. We think about it, bringing Jupiter back into the <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Star yeah, party. Every, wow. We're getting in that time of year. Well, again, yeah, we so. and we are coming close to our 100th episode, which is insane to even think about. Yeah, totally. But, yeah, we're I'll, I'll get the the actual count of it, but yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do something pretty big. We'll be fine. Yeah, that sounds great. Actually, yeah, well, it'll be great to do the Messier, the Messier Marathon uh, in a couple of months, so yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. All right. Well, Michael, sorry you were having your internet problems. Now, yeah. you know, and what do you do for a job? I try to forget. Something about... <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that. I only get what I pay for sometimes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Scott Lewis, and thanks, thanks so much for running the last couple of star star parties while I was on my mad trip down to Los Angeles. I really appreciate it. That's why we're co-hosts. We we exactly. take care of each other. We had, and we had a lot of fun uh, recording at YouTube, and yeah, we have we we have a couple things in plan for the VSP, so we're looking forward to to getting those done. And yeah, yeah. also there's a space fan news. I will still be doing one this week, even though it is a holiday. So that will be out hopefully on Friday. Awesome. Tom, or Tom's yes. avatar, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, I can't get my camera to work now. So. I, think you, I think you did something. You took a picture of us. Yeah. Something. You were using yeah, other I, I applications the camera back of the Hangout. Oh, yeah. yeah. well. Yeah. I don't know well. if I'm going to let you back I, in, because first it was Hangouts effects, and now you're using the <laughs> some other app. You should not be let near any of the Hangout apps. Oh, yep. bad. Yep. <laughs> We're going to pseudo-boot Tom, and you're never allowed back in. <laughs> All right, well, cool. Well, thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, uh, thanks to Bill for bringing the telescope, and Michael for trying your best to coax your internet to, to participate. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for everyone to join us. Thanks for everyone watching, and we will see you all 
next week. Bye. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.